Welcome, Pewter Report readers, viewers, and listeners to a brand new edition of the Pewter Report podcast. It is our first episode of the week after the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did not have training camp practice yesterday on Monday. So today is Tuesday, and it is our first episode of said week. And uh, as you see on the cover here, we're going to talk a little bit about what we saw at training camp today. But the main emphasis of this show is to honor a dear friend, a colleague, a mentor to me, a great friend to Scott, and that is to pay tribute to the legend that is Mark Cook. Mark uh, tragically and sadly passed away unexpectedly almost a year ago. Today's yeah. August 9th. He passed away on August 12th at the age of 50. Um, yeah. Far too soon. Uh, very upsetting for you know all of us and you know, we try to honor his memory as much as we possibly can. So yeah. on this show, starting off, I'm your host, Matt underscore Matera. That's right. <laughs> and joined with me is my boss, Scott Reynolds. Scott, how are you? I'm doing good. That's something that uh, that Mark would always say. I, I never had a cool nickname. I was just like my boss. Like the, he would call me the boss. Yeah. But he would give you guys nicknames when you were interns, Matt. And then as you later became a, a pewter reporter, a Bucks beat writer. You're still underscore. Yeah. Tell the, the reason behind underscore because you're, it's your Twitter handle, right? Yeah. So my Twitter handle, it was Maddie four underscore Matera two. Uh, right. Now Maddie four <laughs> underscore Matera. And, and that, that was too much for Mark to remember. He just remembered underscore. Right? <laughs> well, he didn't, he didn't like the fact that the underscore was there. He was like, that's right. not a professional way to, yeah. you know, to go about it. So yeah. Uh, instead of just saying Matt or Maddie or whatever it might be, he just yeah. called me underscore. And right. it stuck for quite yeah. a while. It did. Um, fans would come up to me saying, hey, how's it going underscore? What's up yeah. underscore? <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's we'll get into the many brilliant things about Mark. Um, yeah. But one of them was the way that he gave nicknames. Now, Scott, you're yeah. a bit of a you're a bit of a nickname aficionado yourself. But uh, Mark Kinda had sorta. a way of. You know, coming up with nicknames that the fans really stuck with. Uh, that's one yeah. of my favorite pictures. I actually yeah. did. I, I recommend to everyone, too. Um, we did a tribute show for Mark uh, last year, mm -hmm. not too long after he passed away. And uh, we had so many great guests. You, myself, and Trevor Sikahema, as you could see uh, yeah. in the photo there. Also known as the Man Bun. The Man Bun, a very yeah. famous and popular nickname given to Trevor right. uh, by Mark Cook. And, and, and of course, Grizz, right? We have Taylor Grizz Jenkins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're not going to get into how that nickname came about. This is a family program. Yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but uh, that, that nickname stuck too. So it was it was pretty pretty cool and, and awesome. Um, we we're going to put up a lot of these comments today. Uh, yeah. Just wanted to kind of start off the show by saying, you know, I've been looking forward to this podcast for quite some time and dreading it. Uh, in, in all honesty, I, I didn't sleep well last night in anticipation of today's podcast. It's one of those things where you're excited for it, but you're also excited for it to be over with just because it's um, it's it's uh, it's hard to believe that it's almost been a year since since he's gone. And, and uh, yeah. you know, um, I turned 50 back in, in April and the first person I thought of was 50, because, as you mentioned, Matt, um, Mark lost his life at the age of 50, far too young. And uh, his death, I don't know about you, but it, it seems to hit me more a year later than it did when it happened. I guess that's the shock last year. And then this is the aftershock. Yeah, I totally get what you're saying. And uh, I think part of it is because when Mark passed, everything happened so quickly, you know, with, yeah. you know, the things that went on when, you know, he left Pewter Report and then he was about to start a new job. Yeah. And, um, I think because like we were right in the middle of training camp, games were about to happen. I apologize, I, I didn't fit that that photo correctly. Yeah. But and Mark would have given you shit about that too. Yeah, but I so. just I I love the photo <laughs> yeah. for those watching. Um, I don't remember specifically what Mark said there, but you can right. see he has this all cracking up, particularly Trevor Sycama, and yeah. he had Trevor in stitches. But yeah, I mean reflecting on a on over a year now and everything was just going on at the time with the with the preseason game and it yeah. happened so quickly and you know i find myself especially with this role that i'm now in with pewter report i i find myself at least once a day like i legit think about mark once a day oh, every yeah. single day yeah. and 
you know, sure, a lot of it is Bucks related and Peter Report related. Some right. of it's just things that I think that he would find funny, or I, I think oh, yeah. about a press conference. I'm like, oh, I wonder how Mark would react to this. I wonder how right. Mark would react to this entire off season, Scott, when you talk oh, about Brady God. retiring and unretiring, <laughs> yeah. and Todd Bowles is the new head coach, and Ali Marpet retires, and Ryan Jensen's back, and Ryan yeah. Jensen gets hurt, unfortunately. And there's just so many times with either decisions that we make or stories that we write. And I just always right. think to myself, I would love to get Mark's take on this. I would love to just get his opinion or just see yeah. another tweet of his uh, to see how he would react to these things. Well, and speaking of tweets, I don't know if people know this, but I mean, he was he was the the ghostwriter for uh, yeah. Was it was it a, a major, major major uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick? Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that was his account. And and the funny thing is, the Buccaneers did not know that for years. I didn't know it either for yeah. a while. Well, yeah. it, he and I knew about it, and then uh, Daisy Charlotte, his his girlfriend, uh, knew about it. But he kept it like very close quarters. Um, we would be remiss if if we didn't, uh, you know, kind of uh, honor the people that that Mark has has left behind. He was a very yeah. loving guy. Not just to the Peter Report staff, but to his his uh, absolute sweetheart uh, Daisy Charlotte, and uh, and certainly to his his beloved son Douglas, uh, yeah. who you know he loved bringing him along to media things. He's like, I got Douglas a credential, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, and re really playing that that role of cool dad. And I mean, here you see him. Uh, this I was at this game, took that picture of, of Mark. Uh, with um, with his son Douglas, who was a, a quarterback and a kicker, you know, and then ended up being a kicker for Durant and played a linebacker too, and it was a damn good one. There's Aaron, his his uh, former wife, and and Douglas's mom. Uh, the guy loved to fish. He was, you know, he he was he was a man of many talents, and humor, I think, was was right up there with the love of Buccaneers. But fishing wasn't far behind. Now, I mean, he loved yeah, he loved sunsets. Uh, Anna Marie Island, uh, going fishing. He played guitar. I mean, th this this was such a talented guy, and and uh, he loved football really from the beginning. I mean, there he yeah. is right there. That's, <laughs> that's the original ginger badass man. That's yeah. that's Mark Cook as uh, as a as a pop Warner Pee Wee football player for Pinecrest back in the day. And you know his his love of writing was really started with with Tom McEwen, uh, and when he, what he would do, Mark would do his columns. He would pay. A tribute, a homage to to Tom McEwen, the legendary Tampa Tribune columnist who we got to meet there. This is back when, when Mark was a little more portly, kind of doing the Chris <laughs> Marley look, you know, and yeah. he would do the fat guy in a little coat, <laughs> fat man, whatever it was, you know. Yeah. And and so right up there with with uh, Louis Grizzard, who was f his favorite columnist, uh, uh, sports columnist was Tom McEwen. This guy right there, Gene Deckerhoff. I mean, he loved Gene Deckerhoff. Why? Because he was the voice of the Florida State Seminoles and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So he got to enjoy Gene Saturdays and Sundays. And those two became good friends. I actually ran into Gene not too long ago over the summer. And the first words out of his mouth were, he's like, I can't believe Mark's gone. And I think that's that's kind of the sentiment that, that, that we all have. Um, and, and, you know, Matt, you mentioned too, that uh, and I want you to kind of touch on this. You know, he he had a way with with the players, and and there were two people that really kind of gave him, um, I think, a well deserved um, shout out, if you will, in the media. You know, which is which is rare, but he really formed a a bond with Bruce Arians, right? And we'll get to a funny clip in just a second here, but he. And Mike Evans, both of those gentlemen, and this is this is right in the middle of you know Zoom conference calls, very impersonal because of COVID. But when when Bruce when when he took the podium for the first time after Mark's death, he 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 honored Mark and and said some kind words. Mike Evans did the same thing at the the start of his press conference at his next appearance as well, and it just goes to show you the respect that that he had. Not just in the Buccaneer community, not just in the Pewter Report reader uh, fan base, but also in the locker room with yeah. the players, with general managers, with coaches, with the players themselves. Yeah, he had a connection with people. And just 
the way he connected with others is so incredible. It's like it's one of those things you just you just have it or you don't. And Mark's way of of communicating, uh, getting his point across, and just overall building these friendships, uh, it makes me think of you know I recently I believe yeah yesterday I was watching the tribute show that we did a year ago. And again, yeah. I would recommend to everyone to watch that show. And John Ledyard said something that, that really resonated with me. And he said, you know, you could work as hard as you can and, and do all these things. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to the relationships you have with people. Yeah. And he said, you know, there were times where he just, he thought, cause you know, John wasn't really with us for too long uh, when Mark was, was here right. too. Well, because John was like in another state, literally. Yeah. yeah, but he said, like, you know, Scott, uh, Mark didn't always have to, like, ask questions hoping for, like, the huge breaking news. He just wanted to be there to, you know, chat with the players and really yeah. forge those relationships. And I think it just speaks volumes when, you know, after that first preseason game, Bruce didn't start with, oh, we should have done this better or we did this well. He started by taking his hat off and, and you know, paying his respects. Yeah to Mark. And then, yeah, same thing with Mike Evans. It was like a couple of days later. Cause again, at the COVID time, you know, you couldn't just have everyone uh, speaking like at, at the time that you wanted them to. So, right. Yeah. Mike came to the podium uh, a couple of days later or, you know, the designated area where we would have press conferences and almost right away. The first thing you said was, you know, rest in peace, Mark cook. And we're talking about the face of the franchise, Mike Evans, future ring of honor member. And yeah, should be, Hall of Famer. And, you know, Mark had an impact on everyone from right. Alan Cross to Mike Evans. So it was all, yeah. it was all over. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is, is when you, when you look at, at the, the impact that he had, he was just so different and unique. And, and uh, I remember um, right before he passed in 2019, Mark and I went over to, to London uh, to cover the game with Cliff Welch. And so we're in London and and all of a sudden we're walking through Hyde Park, yeah. And we're probably you know we got to the hotel. We're, we're there for probably twenty minutes. We decided to just go out and, and walk around Hyde Park, the famous historic park in in the city of London. And it's like out of every Londoner, this is a city of two million people. We run into Warren Sapp. <laughs> yeah, like what are the chances? <laughs> and and we're we're sitting there, and this is a cold day in London. This is what like late October, early November, whenever it was, and. And Warren sits there and just, he's like, you know, Scott, Mark, you know, and, and he's just, we just start talking Buccaneer football for 30 minutes, right? And Mark is just eating it up. And then, of course, we we pose for a picture here. And and that's that's Warren Sapp, not just Buccaneer legend, Miami Hurricane legend, covering up Mark's <laughs> Florida State Seminole FSU logo on the cap. So uh, that that was, uh, you know, Mark Mark was was rarely seen without a hat. That's That's something that was... That, that he, you know, and, and sometimes those hats, uh, <laughs> so, sometimes he would pull these hats out, man. It was, uh, it was, it was something else, but, um, you know, he always repped uh, surfer gear when he wasn't repping pewter report gear and whether it was Volcom Hurley, he tried desperately to get an endorsement deal. It just didn't happen, you know, but, um, um, the, the one thing I do kind of want to circle back around to is, is the, the interns. And, you know, Mark was in charge of our interns in terms of finding them, grooming them and, and, and really growing them into pewter reporters. Right. And, and, uh, and, and I'll say this, Mark was the first person I met when I interned at Buccaneer magazine in the summer of 94. And he became my first friend in Florida. And we, we knew each other for gosh, close to, this is my 27th year in Tampa. Yeah. So about 20, 25, 26 years. And he he kind of interned with with Buccaneer magazine too. He got some some quotes after the game. That's kind of how. And, and listen, back in the day, back in the day, right? With like Uncle Stan reference there. <laughs> back in the day, the thing with with a sports writing and how it's changed is it was all older people. I, I was like the youngest reporter. Back in the day, right, and yeah. so it, it was Mark. So we gravitated towards each other because we were like the young bucks in in one buck place, and and it was kind of cool because all the players were our age. I mean, Warren Sapp. I walked in the door in ninety five. Warren Sapp and Derek Brooks walked in in ninety five too. So we were all kind of the same age. You had a yeah. lot of these sports writers and columnists 
that were much older. But I think that's kind of where Mark started really building that rapport was was just talking to the players because you know it was it was easier. They were our age, mm -hmm. but that that's something that never left. He always formed a rapport with with those players. But getting back to the interns, you know, he had nicknames for you and, and for Grizz. Um, but he also started the Pewter Report podcast. I mean, I mean, what you're watching right now, the origin is, is Mark Cook. He's the one that started the Pewter Nation podcast that was known back then. It was Mark's yeah. brainchild. And the original incarnation was an audio version of the podcast featuring Mark, myself, Trevor Sikama, or Sikahema, as you would say. Uh, Trevor Sikahema. Trevor yeah. Sik Sikahema. And uh, our interns at the time, Matt underscore Matera and Taylor Grizz Jenkins. So that that was like the 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 genesis of of this do we have an old clip from from the audio uh, version of the pewter nation podcast we can play yeah yeah we have a, we have a couple of scott uh first of all though i do want to say thank you i see a super chat in here from tree uh 230 canadian that's extremely wow. nice uh of you tree thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, we have multiple different videos and and audio clips. I mean, Mark, there's so many directions we can go with this, Scott. Yeah. Um, we have his infamous Matt Nagy. Oh yeah. Uh, in oh, okay. All right. Hold on. So so right off the bat, right? So <clears throat> I was a little, um, <clears throat> you know, I was kind of feeling today, right? Because this yeah. is a special show for the Peter Report staff and for for all of Mark's fans out there. And, and so I'm walking, I walk into one buck place and, and who did I see? I didn't see Matt Nagy. No, I didn't see him, but I saw Adam Kaplan. Adam <laughs> Kaplan was out on the sideline watching. Right. The so, beer. so Adam Kaplan was there. So if you remember, <laughs> if you remember him, uh, you know, doing, doing that impersonation, that's, that's certainly what, uh, what, what, uh, popped in my head was mark's voice doing yeah adam kaplan and, and he was great with some of his uh, little impersonations he really was and another thing that we loved about mark is he kept everything so light he kept us in stitches at times yes. and some of that was because mark would make himself laugh so much that he would get this high pitch laugh going oh yeah and uh we'll play it for you guys right now it's an audio clip of a, a bucks bears preview podcast where yeah. Uh, the Bucks ended up getting smoked by Mitch Trubisky and the Bears yeah, before oh gosh, that. Yeah. Remember, a lot of the discussion was whether Jameis who was just coming off the suspension, if Jameis was going to play, if they were going right. to stick with Ryan Fitzpatrick. But uh, here's that video clip. It's You just have to hear it for yourself. Yeah. If you're Matt Nagy, is that his name? Mm -hmm. Nagy. Nagy. I, I, I would change it to Nagy. Are you I really? Would, I'd hate to have the last name. Nagy. Nagy. Uh, <laughs> 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 Never mind. It's Never that mind. joke for me and Reynolds. But anyway, in case this person listens, we won't say anything. Matt Nagy. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> the coach of the Chicago Bears. <laughs> he, he's got a new player called Khalil Mack. <laughs> he's a linebacker. <laughs> Trevor, take over. <laughs> I can, I'm not breathing. I'm not breathing properly. <laughs> talk, Trevor. Just talk. No, no, I'm letting this run. <laughs> you have to talk. <laughs> we may have an inhaler and I'll even ask <laughs> <laughs> I got it. <laughs> asthma. <laughs> I don't feel bad for you when you just keep making jokes and laughing. I can't stop myself. <laughs> I want to kill myself, apparently. <laughs> Call Scott Peterson. Oh, boy. Oh, God. Oh, I have tears running in my eyes. Sorry about that. Um, okay. So uh, I don't even remember what we were just gonna say. The Chicago oh, Bears. Yeah, if 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 you're if you're the Bears, you're no. <laughs> okay, I won't Stop. say. I'm not gonna say Matt Nagy. <laughs> <laughs> if you are Matt Nagy, how concerned are you really that it's gonna be not, Winston no, or no, Fitzpatrick though? No. Seriously, I mean, no, everybody's talking about that. Oh, we don't want to give others competitive. They're gonna have to prepare for two quarterbacks. <laughs> My favorite part oh, of that whole yeah. thing is like after the initial laugh, yeah, when he like he he's literally cannot talk, like he right. says it in the thing, but he's like, <laughs> I got asthma. 
and he's, he's like Trevor talk and he's yeah. like no no I'm just letting this roll he was so committed to like the joke itself yes <laughs> oh yeah when he's like you know impossible to to even oh yeah talk. and Brent Allen brings up uh um Mark losing it over that old coach in the tiny shorts <laughs> Abe Gibran who who Trevor swore didn't exist it was like a fictional coach and he's like hey, there's nobody named Abe Gibran <laughs> yeah there is yeah he's like, yeah I don't think so um okay so th this is you know th th this is this is one thing that mark and i it was like a little bit we did um the constant gig of scott having a story to tell but kept running out of time so th this is probably the appropriate show for me if i'm going to tell the the chuck berry story no 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 scott it, it's i don't mean to cut you off but it, it's too early for that because we also got to get to our uh you know, our Celsius promo. Oh, yeah, it's too yeah. too early for the Chuck Berry. So I'll do the, the Chuck Berry uh, story later in the show then. Yeah, 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 yeah. We still okay. got like 40 minutes. We still got a little bit okay. of time. So yeah. we'll, we'll do the story then. But, okay. you know, I okay. can't transition like Scott, uh, like Mark Cook did. But right. I will transition just to let everyone know that uh, Celsius is the title sponsor of the Peter Report podcast. And we love Celsius for multiple different reasons. I personally love it because I love the variety of drinks that they have going on. You got... The sparkling peach, you got the sparkling watermelon. Uh, I'm rocking the orange right now for our guy Cookie, the ginger yep. badass. Uh, the tropical vibes, peach vibe, fantastic. Love the tropical vibe. I've been on a huge Arctic vibe kick, as you see there on the left-hand side of the photo. There's seven essential vitamins, and uh, it gives you that energy that you need to get through your day. Whether you're going to work in the morning, whether you're going to pump some iron and have a workout in the afternoon, uh, there's so many different flavors and, of course, gives you that energy with no crash, no post-energy drink jitters. So uh, make sure you go to Celsius.com. Click on the store locator to find out where you can find a Celsius. And you know what? They're pretty much everywhere right now. You could also go to Amazon.com and pre-order so you have a shipment that can come every two weeks, three weeks, however fast or slow that you want it. But uh, make sure you check out Celsius because there's so many great flavors, seven essential vitamins, and it gives you that energy you need to get through your day. That's Celsius Live Fit. No doubt. The Arctic vibe is excellent. And, I love uh, the Arctic vibe. Yeah. And uh, the vibe variety pack at Publix, Alan says. Yeah, the new Arctic vibe is definitely a big hit. Um, Mark did a great job with, with the segues and the transitions. I mean, there's times where I want to kind of pat myself in the back if I do a good one, right? Or even like you do a good one during the show. But the thing is, is, is I the, really the thought that's running through my mind is, is Mark would be proud. Like, Ooh, nail yeah. down. Mark would be uh, proud. Yeah. Right? yeah. Again. And Trevor said this on the tribute show last year. Mark is the king of the segues. He is the absolute king when it comes to that. And you know, no one will ever compare to Mark when it, when it comes to doing the different segues and everything going on right. like that. But I do try to do him justice by, yes. You know, coming up with more creative ones or trying to just transition into yeah. an ad where you think I'm going to give like another piece of analysis or whatever it is about the box right. and then just go straight into uh, exactly. segue. So no one can reach Mark's level in terms of that. But I think mm -hmm. we we do it justice by um, yeah. you know, going about it in creative ways that I know Mark right. would have liked. And, and you know what the thing, too, is, is, is he loved doing the ad spots, the commercials, because the, the the secret to why advertising works on Peter Report uh, on our podcast and our website is, is we don't need like 50 advertisers. We don't have room for them. I mean, yeah. <laughs> we, we don't sit there and have like a commercial every other, every other minute on the show, but um, we, we, we genuinely use and like the products and services that we represent here. Yes. And, and, and you kind of have to do that. I mean, Mark Cook ate at Ford's garage almost every night. Like legit, yeah. <laughs> he would like tell me. Part of it's because we had some barter in the deal, and he, you know, we did it for free. But uh, he he would do that, and he would turn these commercials into. It was supposed to be a sixty second spot. That's what we promised the advertiser. Some of these commercials would turn into like three four minute opus, uh, you know, endeavors. Yeah. Especially T.A. Mahoney's, because he would literally rattle off every item in the store, right? From, you know, from your lures to, you know, your uh, the, the trailer hitch repair, if you need that. If you need a trailer, they can get you one. Uh, they've got uh, rigs and jigs and everything from, you know, bait and tackle, flare guns. I mean, it just became like like a whole bit. But um, uh, it was it, it was really special how he took very good care of our advertising partners. 
and and uh, and T. A. Mahoney was, was one of those with the flare guns. I mean, and, that became well, a thing. That was the number one overall item was the yeah. flare gun. It became a staple of our podcast. It became a reference to it literally yeah. every single time. And again, right. Mark would come up with uh, ways to utilize the flare gun and yes. put them uh, in product placement and put them in so many different right. ways. So here is one of Mark's many flare gun references, segues, whatever you want to say. Use the promo code pewter to activate the offer. That's P E W T E R. Once again, promo code pewter to take advantage of my bookies, generous sign up offer. Visit my AG today. You play, you win, you get paid. I'll tell you what I'd like to see Bruce Arians do. Take over play calling. Instead of throwing that silly little flag that was hard for us to see if he's challenging a play. Why not just shoot a flare gun up in the air? That's an idea. That would get the referee's attention, and it might intimidate him a little bit to actually change the call when I he's think right. If, if Bruce had a flare gun, he would shoot it at the officials. Yes, though. yes, he probably trying would. to wound or maim them. Yeah, and and I don't blame him because the officiating was bad today. But if he were to do that, and I'm sure it's against NFL rules, but if he were to do that, he could go get one at uh, I don't know Walmart. No, maybe uh, T. A. Mahoney's. Oh yes, T. A. Mahoney's. Yeah. You know what? T. A. Mahoney's has been in business, Scott, since the year you were born, 1948. Damn. Yeah, it's a long time. A long time. 71 years. And you don't stay in business that long unless you're doing something right. Family owned and operated the entire time. They're your number one headquarters for all of your marine needs. From the smallest thing, a little baby tiny hook, you want to catch a little brim or bluegill on with your grandkids, all the way up to a flare gun. Probably even one of those things, bank sticks that you shoot sharks with. How about like like a, a gaff hook? Oh yeah, right? absolutely. Bruce could use that on the official too. <laughs> that or maybe could use a that. trident. Or or <laughs> yes, that would get their attention if he threw a trident on the middle of the field and stabbed one of the officials. It might work. Probably against the law again, but it's football. We don't know what's against the law. We saw Miles Garrett the other night. That's that's criminal. <laughs> right. Anyway, T. A. Mahoney's. They're located 50th Street in Adamo. Even if you're not a fisherman, stop by, check out their amazing show. I forgot about that. He would always reference that you were born in like the early 1900s. Yeah, and Mark was older than me by like a couple months. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, oh my God, I'm just like crying and like laughter and just tears because I miss that guy. I mean, he he found a way to mix fun and football in a way that was just unique. You know, we, we Mark, Matt, you and I, we've got some little funny moments. You know, there'll be yeah. times where we're going to do like a little show recap or like, hey, it was pretty funny when we said this or that. But listen, neither one of us are Mark Cook, right? Nobody yeah. yet. And, and he could find humor in anything. I mean, he, he took that, that one commercial, right? And it went right into the, to the other, to the T.A. Mahoney commercial. Yeah. And and also too, remember we had West Shore Financial as as a, a company, and there was an, an advertising partner, and he would always talk about ways in, in the segment, the, the segue uh, that he's like, hey, I have got this cockamamie scheme to to yeah. get financial independence and make a lot of money, and I mean just just classic stuff. Yeah, a lot of it would be like selling shirts of like a player that made the Pro Bowl, but then yeah. for the Bucks did not make the Pro Bowl. There was one transition transition when I was like listening to a couple things. It was like save your money with Chris Garrido, put it in a parlay and win more money at my bookie. Yeah. Celebrate by shooting off a flare gun from yeah. TA Mahoney's and then go to Ford's garage for dinner. That's yeah. like a final thing. <laughs> and he put it like all together. <laughs> as like one perfect you know mark cook type yeah. of uh segue it was yeah. no one else can do it like him for real no one else really could yeah it, the thing too just just a, a couple of bits of, of bucket new, news because uh mark was famous for kind of ranting about things and i'd have to break into uncle stan because mark would just get off track when, when we just to do the audio podcast there was never any script we would literally go in there and and uh, so what are we going to talk about today? Like five minutes before yeah, we were yeah. so what are we going to talk about today? We had no script. It was mostly just off the cuff. Now the difference is back in the audio days, Matt, and you were the producer. We had to stop, <laughs> stop the recording, rewind, edit some stuff out because of too much laughter, an inappropriate joke, something like that. Yeah, he was always kind of famous for that. But um, but yeah, it, it was it was. This is classic comedy with Mark all the time. And and I think that th that's kind of what made him special too, is, is the fact that he, he, it wasn't scripted. It wasn't, it, it was a bit, but it was like a bit or a gimmick that just came to him. It, it wasn't like any preconceived, 
premeditated, yeah. like, hey, I'm going to say this. It's going to be funny today. Uh, and, and if if he did say that, it was like a minute or two before the show, he'd say, hey, let's let's do this a little bit. And we were like, oh, OK, yeah, sure. We can do that. And and one of the funny things that happened uh, right before one of the podcasts, because back in the day, Matt, we used to either do them at one buck in your place at the stadium, yeah. uh, sometimes at my house. And uh, <laughs> we had some new cables that ah yes that, that, <laughs> that mark wanted to open and you know uh, i would call mark grandpa sometimes because he's older than me and um and, you know and, and he's like hey do you have a knife and i said yeah sure you know don't don't cut yourself and of course mark like literally sliced his hand yeah. wide open <laughs> i mean what the heck <laughs> just sliced it wide open and and he was like bleeding on my floor you know which i was giving him shit about that but but he did the whole podcast uh, with with like nothing but paper towels. Just <laughs> I think he was like losing blood yeah. the whole time. And <laughs> his face was turning pale, and he's like, "All right, boys, I think I'm gonna have to go get some stitches." This is like after an hour podcast, and he's yeah. bleeding profusely. But I mean, that's just like typical classic Mark. And and of course, Mark had an ego, right? And he would sit there and say, "Now I want everybody to you know you tell him what I went through to do this podcast, right?" Mm-hmm. So, and you know. It's one of those "Are you hurt or are you injured?" type of thing. Right. Mark, Mark wanted to keep going through with it. I don't think I was there for that instance, but obviously I, I've heard the story. Oh, before. okay. Then I, th- I think that was that might have been Grizz and Trevor, and yeah. you might not have been there for that one because it was we had we had four people here. So I, yeah, you know, I'm old. I'm 50 years. I don't remember yesterday <laughs> much less you know years ago. But but uh, one thing that we do remember about Mark is the fact that uh, this is a great collection, right? Of of if you were to say Mark Cook on the Peter Report podcast, like what was it? It was the Def Leppard cut off T-shirt, the story yeah. there, right? <laughs> it was wanting to fight a fan in Lot Six. It wanting to fight Jude I J Barima, former Buccaneer corner, who according to Mark single handedly lost the Raiders yeah. game with uh, with a, a, a bad holding call or pass interference in the end zone. Uh, there's the flare gun right there. Uh, the Chuck Berry story, which is, is this a good time for me to to tell the, the Chuck Berry story in honor of Mark? I'm not sure. We still got a couple more videos and, and audio oh, clips to get okay. to. So I think that story can wait just a little bit longer. OK, I, I'll, I'll wait yeah. closer to the end of the show. then. OK, uh, the, the other thing is, is uh, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about Mark's felonious ways. Now, Mark, Mark would, would on, on occasion break some news on PeterReport.com. He actually broke some news on the podcast that we didn't know, and I'm a little embarrassed to admit this. That we, did, you know, we thought we we did a thorough background check on Mark. We didn't. Mark actually <laughs> got arrested. That's the actual Mark Cook, Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office mugshot. And and what crime did he commit, Matt? I believe he fished without a license. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Fishing without a license. I like the fact too that he did he still even get one after after his uh, run in with the law? <laughs> what get a fish? No, like a fishing license. Like I oh. assume after the fact I, I that think he, he did after he, he served time for yeah. uh, you know <laughs> for yeah. doing that, you would think. Well, wasn't he just like didn't pay a ticket? Uh, yeah, so, something to that effect. Uh, yeah, or no, and, no actually, I, I think his father Larry actually said that that he he did end up paying the the, the ticket. Uh, so there wouldn't be a warrant out for his arrest. I think that was the case, mm. uh, but um, but yeah. So Mark did get popped for fishing without a license, and one of the other things too is we we talked about how how Mark was so well liked by the players, but there was one particular player that he had uh, an extreme affection for because as we know mark was the ginger badass right and so yep. he would gravitate towards gingers for sure so if you look there's mark cook on the left right with his uh was that a quick silver hat i think yeah the peter Look report shirts yeah, yeah yeah he's got, got the beard everything got the glasses and then he's he's uh, talking with alan cook or i'm sorry alan cross um <laughs> wait oh no, no no wait wait a minute hold up alan cross is dressed up like mark cook and mark no. cook is dressed up like Alan Cross. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, identical. Yeah, yeah, it was so funny. They were they were two peas in a pod. Yeah, you know, uh, Alan Cross obviously was 
a big participant in the uh, Pin Chasers Bowling League, the Peter yeah. Report Bowling League at Pin Chasers, when uh, you know when he was with the team, and you know had a lot of fun there. Alan Cross, I believe, was the first ever guest on uh, Mark's quite popular show on PeterReport.com. What's cooking? Uh, what's yeah. cooking? That was the first guest that he ever had. Uh, Mark had some good ones over the years, though, or yeah. I guess the two seasons that he did it. Um, had Mike Evans on, had Chris yep. Godwin, had a whole bit with Shaq Barrett where uh, he he wore one of my Shaquille O'Neal jerseys. Yeah, and, you know, right. something going on there. Matt, uh, do, you yeah. remember, do you remember this? Uh, where, where anybody who was not on the podcast yeah. was suspended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so right now, JC is suspended. Bailey is suspended. Casey yeah. is suspended. And Josh Capo is suspended right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just the two of us in that show. But yeah. Uh, well, hold on here. We, we've got Willie coming to ruin the party. There always has to be a party pooper. Willie, we appreciate you tuning in. But this is, and it was, was advertised as the Mark C Cook Tribute Show. And the reason why we're doing it today, Willie, and every other Buccaneer fan out there, is because the Dolphins will scrimmage the Buccaneers tomorrow and Thursday. Mm -hmm. And as, as it turns out, today is the 9th, and... Mark passed away on the 12th, but we wanted to to do this today because we understand the importance of the joint practices with the Bucks and Dolphins, right? So we're going to do nothing but football tomorrow and on Thursday. We're going to have two shows talking Bucks Dolphins. So appreciate your patience, but we will get there. Okay. Yeah, we will. And Scott, if we want to talk about practice a little bit today, it was yeah. a lighter practice because the Dolphins are coming in tomorrow. You know, the the Bucs were in shells and shorts. Uh, Tom Brady practiced, but he honestly didn't even really. <laughs> Bailey, living the suspended life right now. Right. Shout out to Bailey. Right. I saw Josh Capo in there as well. Shout out, yep. Josh. Uh, sorry you're suspended right now, but right. it is what it is. Um, but yeah, practice itself today. Like Brady didn't even really practice that much right. uh, because of getting ready for tomorrow. Yep. It was a good day for some of the wide receivers that are fighting to make this team. Jalen Darden had a pretty good he day. Did. A uh, Cyril Grayson Julio Jr. Jones. made a nice, yeah. Julio Jones made like a diving catch over the middle. That that was really cool. And you know what? Uh, I see a couple people in here. Rox was talking about when uh, Mark flipped out ah. about Jameis uh, after the Texans game. And who was it? Yeah, Cannon Fire Podcast also said he just played like shit. Yeah. Uh, we actually have a clip of that. So do. why don't we just get into it right now, yeah. Scott? Because the the fans the fans are asking for it. So. And what they want, Mark Cook. Exactly. So just to premise this for people that might not know or, um, you know, haven't heard about it in a while. So Mark is a Florida State guy and he was normally a Jameis Winston defender. But towards the end of Jameis's campaign, uh, that 2019 season, there was, of course, uh, everyone remembers the the pick six that ended the Bucks season. Well, they weren't making the playoffs anyway, but the pick yeah. six against Atlanta. Uh, that was Jameis's last throw with the Bucks. The week before that, though, he had four interceptions. The Bucs played a great game against the Texans, but lost yep. in large part due to the turnovers. And this is one of those instances where Mark was just kind of like, I have had it. He's thrown so many interceptions. I'm tired of covering this guy. What makes it so it, weird. It's sticking up for him, too, because, I mean, he was a Jameis Winston apologist. I mean, he genuinely liked Jameis. I genuinely like Jameis, yeah. right? Yeah, but the, I the, like Jameis, too, but, right. uh, but you know, but the, eventually the, you have to move on. Yeah, and the thing is, is Jameis Winston started his Buccaneer career with the pick six. Yeah. And he ended it with the pick six. I mean, th that that is his legacy in Tampa is just too many turnovers, right? And and it was it was just stunning to hear Mark just lose it up in the press box after yeah. the game. And not only that, but we got one of the classic Mark versus Trevor arguments, but it was almost switched in the fact that Trevor was kind of defending Jameis Winston, a Florida Gator defending Jameis, yeah. while the Seminole was against <laughs> Jameis. Right. So here's his video. I cut it up a little bit because it's it's kind of long, but we condense it into most of the parts that, that Mark is talking about. So again, this is Mark ranting about Jameis after a four-interception game where the Bucks lost to the Texans late in the season. I really don't think he did. No. I don't. I don't think he had. He just the played Superman. like shit. <laughs> <laughs> he just played like total. Garbage. You're not wrong. <laughs> I mean, wrong. all four of those interceptions were awful interceptions that you Bad hope, hope a rookie, a rookie quarterback doesn't make. Not a guy in his fifth year. 
wow, you would think that Jameis Winston went to Florida rather than Florida State the way you're drilling. Okay, he, hold on now. Wait a, minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think the first and the fourth were Jameis, and I think the other two. With Winston, it's a qu- easy. And, and Mark, you actually had a, a good point. I did. Yeah, you made a really good point what? for the first time this what? year. Well, you were talking no, no, about no, no, how, no. that had to be somebody else. Yeah, somebody no, it was, it was I, that, I, no, who's sitting I'm, next I'm to Jenna? Props. I stole it from someone no, else, yeah. probably. Um, if if I last no, if I told you last time the Bucks swept the Falcons was 2015. Okay, it's been a minute. So if I tell you that DeAndre Hopkins oh. is going to have, I don't know, 23 yards receiving, Carlos Hyde's going to have, I don't know, 27 yards rushing. That uh, I don't know the the Texans are going to have a whopping two hundred and twenty nine yards of offense. Who wins this football game? The Bucks easily. Not to mention five sacks by the defensive line. Three of them coming from Jason Pierre Paul. So why did the Buccaneers lose this football game? It's on one guy. It's on one guy. No, they didn't win this football game because they didn't have Mike Evans or Chris Godwin. He threw four interceptions. Terrible throws. There were no receivers at fault on any of those. Throws. You know, as, as bad as some of the throws by Winston was, and I'm not excusing his performance, his misses to Brashad Perriman for the touchdown sure. and O.J. Howard, those mm-hmm. are potential touchdowns. Yeah, that, those are game changers, too. Yeah, that, that were game changers just like the picks. And, I agree. And, you know, listen, listen, it was not a good day for Jameis at all, but to keep it in yeah. So there's on this two sides of the coin well, all how the about, time with Well, this how team. about as a quarterback, you just not throw 20 inter- interceptions? Well, no, in you season. can't do it. But and, I think and, and see what, what I'm happens. saying, what, and listen, I'm not trying to make too much of an excuse for him, but in terms of how this team is built, this team is built to take shots on offense. That's the identity. I understand that they have a good defensive coach and they have a lot and of guys that they four like. Four of those interceptions but it's not, were shot throws. Two were simple outs. Right. right. Simple outs. Right. One was, a, and then the other two were comebacks across the middle. Right. Maybe one. Right. I mean, but like, these aren't, the, the, he's I know. throwing interceptions, not on difficult throws. I know, we but like. We keep making excuses that he's required. Bruce is making him do this and Byron's <laughs> making him do this. He's throwing interceptions that you scream at high school quarterbacks for throwing. Listen, he's you're, in year five. You're 100% year right. Year five. We've talked about this before. I'm but, tired of covering the guy. Okay, okay so you want him out of Tampa. You, yes, you want him yes, out of Tampa. Yes. Who, who do you want in here? I don't care. Somebody who's no, not going to No, no, you name a name. No, that's not the right answer. You name a name. There's 31 other guys in this league that haven't thrown 28 interceptions. I'll take all 31 of those. they're under contract. How many of them have eight wins? I'm just saying. 31 other guys. How many of them had more than eight wins like this team's going to finish with that aren't franchise quarterbacks that the Bucs are never going to get? Don't know. Don't care. Just no, tell no, 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 you. No, 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 no. That's not a, that's okay, not a okay, good answer. That's fine. You guys like the roller coaster. No, you guys I've probably, never said I like the roller coaster. You guys apparently love going, you guys love dude, going actually, to Bush Gardens and riding roller coasters. I'm right? too old for roller coasters. I like to go walk around and Look, check out the animals. You guys like the thrills no, and the no. twists. And the Listen, I'm getting too old for this. You, but what do you want? You want Brady, best quarterback of all time? What do you want, Drew Brees? He's orchestrating one okay, of the best so offenses let's be that's ever been in as a franchise No, no. I've, of I've been saying to draft a quarterback. I've never third or shied round. away from that. Those and they're going to so, draft so a quarterback. They're, they're going they're to draft, draft a quarterback, quarterback, quarterback next year. In the third or fourth round, you're going to get another Mike Glennon? How'd that pan out? Would you Who want are you going to get in the third or fourth round? Will what? Greer? Dak Prescott no, was a fourth I, I, round I quarterback. No, I agree with you that it gets that you have less of a chance to hit on a quarterback, but I also think you have less of a chance to hit on a quarterback if you're not picking in the top 10. So I, what are you going to pick, agree. Jordan Love? In the top 10, you're just going to throw him out there to the Wolves? He's not throwing dude 20 threw se- interceptions Dude next threw year. 17 interceptions in college. He's not throwing 28 next year. He's not throwing two on simple outs. It's probably but fair. You probably don't make those throws or you oh, probably man. complete them. To, yeah, I can. Okay, but here's my whole point. Jameis struggles with the easy throws, and it's extremely frustrating. He's also really great at the deep shots that this entire offense is built around. So when it comes to replacing him, don't get me wrong, he's frustrating on a lot of different areas. But Mariota can throw you an out. You're in a bad marriage where you keep holding on to hope. I'm not holding I'm on to hope. I'm going to keep this no, 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 no. marriage or I'm this boyfriend-girlfriend is... relationship going in hopes James that he's finally he going to stop drinking and beat me up or he's going to quit cheating on me or she's going to quit spending money on my credit card. You're so talking in to the hopes. guy who said Jameis is Jameis for the longest time. It is who he is. I've brought it up. His freshman year at Florida State was the outlier year. Yes. The offense is built around taking shots. I'm not saying they're going to. Shots. I don't think they're going to. I'm just saying, if you think next year all of a sudden Jameis Winston is going to throw 14 interceptions in 16 games, No, but my point is if he throws 18, mind. do you make the playoffs? 
Do you win a Super Bowl? Well, I don't know. okay. I don't know. Now, no, 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 no. Because now we're getting that's into a real talk. Because if you, yeah. so that's where I am. I, the the offense is kind of what it is. Nobody's defended this guy more than me in this room the last five years. Nobody. Right. And I'm just I'm just tired of it. Again, I saw four throws out there that if I'm a high school coach, I'm screaming at my quarterback and I'm oh, grabbing yeah. by the face mask saying, oh, "What yeah. the hell are you doing? Yeah, you can't make those throws. You I mean what are you not seeing? How are you not seeing yeah. the quarterback sitting on those outs? And that's why, like, no I, one, no one on fourth and three down here with two right, minutes so, left but to listen, go. Listen, even, listen, even listen. If, I'm not going to make excuses for Jameis, but Bruce did say that he's throwing to guys, and Jameis is used to making those throws to, to guys like Chris and I Mike, think that's who will sort come back and fight for. In- <laughs> that that's an all time rant. Yeah, it's an all time rant by Mike. It is. Yeah. It is uh, another another all time, uh, not a rant, but a, yeah. an all time uh, running bit that Mark Cook had going. Of course, was that um, he had his own book. He had his own book that, unfortunately, he lost a significant amount of money from, and that was my cookie, right? Not Ag, yeah. Um, but eventually, Mark got it going, and he understood yeah. that the place that you have to go. And bet your money on it was not my cookie. It was not my cookie. It was, but it was my bookie. And folks, the best time of the year to bet, of course, is football season. And we're almost there. You can start betting on the preseason if you want. The Bucks, of course, have their first preseason game on uh, Saturday. But if you don't want to wait until then, you obviously have baseball going on right now. There's still different golf events happening. Uh, the UFC goes on uh, every weekend, and of course, football is around. The corner there's run lines money lines prop galore especially for baseball going on you could do prop bets for football players as well when the season gets here and nobody gives you more opportunities to win than my bookie getting started is simple you deposit up to a thousand dollars and play with five hundred dollars instantly just use the promo code pewter to claim a my bookie deposit bonus whether you're a diehard fan or a newcomer to the sport there's never been a better time to join the my bookie family go ahead and sign up today using promo code pewter to secure your first deposit bonus up to a thousand dollars, whatever you put in, they'll meet halfway all the way up to a thousand dollars. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. Even if you learn from Plant City math, I think you can understand <laughs> that if you put in a thousand dollars, you will get five hundred dollars free. That's and right. Mark always said that even he could do that math. So yep. uh, make sure you go to yep. mybookie.ag with the promo code Pewter. Not my cookie, my bookie. Not that's my there's a big cookie. distinction there. Use the, the B, not the C. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just a couple of things real quick, and and I I thought one of the comments, and we appreciate all of the comments. This one right here is interesting, right? Because Mark helped the Bucks get uh, TB12. He put this out in the into the universe, and TB answered. Of course, Tom Brady, and the rest is history. Love you, Mark. Two things. We actually did a podcast. I think we were probably, if not the first, one of the first. I think our next podcast, we talked about Brady possibly coming to the Buccaneers and how that really wasn't a far-fetched thing. This was in January, man. This was like mid-January. And, of course, that happened. Mark's last game was, and, and granted, this is this is still in COVID year, right? This is 2020. We only got three press box credentials, actually two. We got what's called the auxiliary press box pass, and, and so our – our number two guy at the time was John Ledyard and and myself, and then you had Mark. And I asked Mark, uh, I, I said, listen, we only have three credentials to the Super Bowl. Two of them are in the press box, side by side, and one is in the stands. And he, and he said, okay, so you're going to be up in, in the press box. Uh, where do you want me? And I said, well, I'm asking you as, as a, a longer tenured um, employee, a pewter reporter, Rather than John, I'll give you dibs on on the spot. If you want to be in the press box with me, cool. If you want to be in the stands and have John in the press box, that's fine too. I'll let you make the call. He's like, man, this is tough. I was like, yeah, I know. And Mark Cook was one of those guys. You probably heard him talk about the footy pajamas, right? The creamsicle footy pajamas he used to wear. He started loving the Buccaneers in 1977 as a little kid. And he called me back about 30 minutes later. He says, hey, if it's okay with you, 
I'd like to sit in the stands. And I said, yeah, I already told John he's in the press box with me. We, we just knew. So Mark Cook's last game, how fitting, was the Super Bowl. And he, as a lifelong Buccaneer fan and somebody who pursued his dream of covering the team that he loves and doing it with, with a great deal of objectivity, mind you, uh, he, he was – you heard it right there with Jameis Winston, man. He defended the franchise guy up to a certain point, and, and really that was in line with Bruce Arians. Bruce Arians was, was about a week away from joining Mark and saying, no, we're done with this guy. But for Mark's last game as, as a Buccaneer fan, to be in the stands – Watching the confetti fall and the the, the fireworks go off, uh, it was an absolute joy for him. And so I, I I can't imagine him scripting it if he had to go this early, yeah. which he did. Uh, having it any other way just doesn't – it just doesn't make sense. If, other there, than- if there was any game to go to for his last game, yeah. having it be that one is it, – it, it's perfect. Buccaneers and Super Bowl. In Raymond James. In Raymond James Stadium. Yeah. Just absolutely in incredible. Stands. And there's a great picture that he took of himself, too. Let's remember, one thing that makes Mark a badass is that he never smiles in any picture. You know? That's true. He just kind of, like, looks yeah. straight forward like this, yeah. you know, when he when he's taking the picture. But he right. even cracked a little bit of a smile. Yeah. I mean, you see him right there. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, that's Mark smiling. Like, he 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 liked the old-timey guys uh, where he, he would say that he – he says, you know, you know, back in the day, nobody smiled for pictures, you know, and that was cool. <laughs> yeah. He was he was the ginger badass. We we would be was. remiss if we because we talked about Alan uh, Cross yeah. being BFFs with Mark. I mean, the similarity was just off the chain. But can you imagine how Mark would be just going gaga over Coquif? Uh he would have absolutely right? loved they would have been best friends in the no world. doubt. Yeah, no doubt. But Scott, another thing, Mark like he was calling everything at that time. Remember, he accurately predicted like the first 15 picks of the NFL draft that year. Yeah. Um, in his Bucks battle plan, he had the Bucks signing Tom Brady. So he called that. That's and true. He did. He also wrote an article in the hook before the draft even started that the Bucks should draft Kyle Trask as right. their future quarterback. So That's Mark crazy. was hitting all of the spots, you know, yeah. around that time or uh, around the draft and, right. and in the office. It was really befuddling to a lot of, of Mark Cook fans because he was so pro seminal and to have him actually come out in favor of, of drafting a Gators quarterback was, was just something else. I would be re- also remiss if I didn't throw at the obligatory, uh, yeah. <laughs> Backstreet Boys, Nick Carter, uh, and see again. This is Mark smiling, right? You see Nick Carter, <laughs> Backstreet Boys smiling. This is Mark Cook yeah. smiling for the picture. It's not like like Daisy, you know. She didn't say smile, Mark. She did. That's Mark yeah, smiling. Yeah. That's just how it was. Of course, the Billabong hat, yeah. but that's just who he was. And Mark loved, you know, he he loved, you know, being around the celebrities and being BFFs with Nick Carter. And uh, that, that was just awesome. But, I mean, listen, the reason why he's BFFs with so, with so many, it just was natural. He just had that charisma, that persona about him. It's, why, it's what made him so endearing. And, and I think one of the things, too, you're going to love this segue, Matt, is we used to do these bowling events, these charity events, et cetera, and Mark would be spearheading those and getting those set up and would love to go out there and meet the fans at, what was that place called? Uh, the number one bowling place uh, in Tampa, Pin Chasers. Oh, that's right, Pin Chasers. Yeah, if you guys aren't going to Pin Chasers by now, uh, you are missing out because it's more than just a bowling alley itself. It is a fun night out with friends and or family. They have multiple different locations, East Pasco, Zephyr Hills, Midtown, and Veterans. Of course, they have one pretty close to the Advent Health Training Center where the Bucks practice and have their training camp. The food is underrated. Pizza's great. Chicken tendies, awesome. Nachos, fantastic. And they have different deals literally every single day. They got all-you-can-eat pizza, all-you-can-bowl, Dollar Miller Lights. They got brunch on the weekend. So no matter what day you go, there's going to be something there for you. So head on to pinchasers.net and see what type of deals that they have because there's going to be one that you're going to want to uh, make sure that uh, you – I don't want to say take advantage of, but these deals are so good that you got to make sure you get there. And uh, of course we're in the middle of the summer right now. It's still really freaking hot outside. And chasers always has the AC bumping. They have it blasting. So you want to cool off, chill out, go to pin chasers. They have the AC going. 
And it's great to uh, book a party for your kid as well. They got the video game section, so uh, your kid and their friends can uh, can bowl and also play some video games. And like I said, they have something for everyone. So go to pinchasers.net to reserve a lane or book a party. And you will absolutely enjoy it. That's pinchasers.net. Yep. Uh, this is a great comment right here. The man dressed like a Pac Sun store. Yeah, he was always in the surfing yeah. uh, attire. I want when, to make sure I brought my Vans hat out for Mark. You, uh, yeah. you know, he was a big Vans guy as well. Definitely. So. Yeah. Uh, th there was a time where where Mark sustained an injury. I think surfing. Right. Well, <laughs> as we saw from the hand injury, uh, he got a couple injuries along the way. Yeah. I know one in particular was a rib injury, and right. he was telling us on the podcast that had us all in stitches, you in particular, Scott. So uh, here's Mark talking about his infamous rib injury that happened, I think, when he was trying to play football. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Combine stance, right? <laughs> Uh, this, is before the, this is before the broken back. All right, so I get down to the combine stance, and he's looking at me like, whatever. And, and Aaron goes, three, two, one, go. And I come out of my stance, but I don't come out of it. My feet slip from underneath me. I face plant, and I crack a rib. That is a true story. So that is when I realized I know that's a true my story. life is over. You know I've had rib problems for a long time. Yes, oh I cracked God. a rib. Yes. You told me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and that's what made me think of the surfing thing because he did like re injure a rib surfing one time. Like, okay. Hey, you break a rib, it's water, man. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I don't know, man. I just, I got up and I fell down. I broke a rib surfing. So, I mean, you know, he was a walking calamity, that guy, I tell you. Good, good times with with Mark Cook, uh, an absolute blast. Uh, just being his friend, um, being the butt of his jokes. Uh, speaking of that, let me see if I have a one of the pictures here we didn't get to. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Well, the thing is, Mark was always, you know, dressed in Volcom O'Neill. He was he was the surfer guy. He was the beach boy at one buck place when he wasn't wearing Peter Report attire. Even when he was, you could see here. Uh, Zach Shapiro, a former former yeah. Spartan, UT Spartan, uh, your predecessor Go in terms yeah. of interns. But he would always mix the ensemble, right? He had the Pewter Report shirt and the Hurley hat. Mm -hmm. And now when he would get dressed up, <clears throat> uh, the Spoken Company, the official uh, clothier of Pewter Report, he would wear what, what was affectionately known as, because David Kahn is the proprietor, uh, he and, and Brett Bear. But David is is kind of the, the the manager of Bespoken Company, and they provided us with all these great suits. We're, we're, we're doing Channel Eight News. We got to look good, and and so even though it was like bespoke attire, and Mark loved getting dressed up on game days, but he would call it, or we if we had like an advertising meeting or something, he'd say, "Hey, what are you wearing? Are you wearing like a Pewter Report shirt today, and slacks, or are you wearing like a Con shirt?" K A H N <laughs> David's name. Are you wearing a Con shirt? Uh, oh, you mean like a button-down shirt? Yes, yeah. But he always called it a concert. He always had great affection for David and Brett at Bespoke and loved getting dressed up. Uh, there was one time, though, at the Senior Bowl where yep. where, where, where Mark, Mark, Mark was not exactly uh, Mr. Fashion. Uh, this was a very <laughs> cold day, a rainy day, as it can be in Mobile, Alabama at the Senior Bowl. Right there at the old Lad People Stadium. I'm rocking, of course, the Kansas State well, Wildcats yep. at uh, EMA. But talking to Jason Light, Jason's not in a good mood, obviously. You can see stuff look at his face. But here I am. I'm, you know, <laughs> looking uh, appropriately dressed, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, you know, got some, some, some uh, you know, all-weather khakis on. And, and there's Mark. He's wearing, he's wearing like, sweatpants, <laughs> hoodie. He's got one of his surfer hats on and a T-shirt. And he's like, I'm freezing. And, of course, he had the... He had this poncho on, and Jason Light looks at him. He's like, "He's like, is that Mark? You look like a hobo." <laughs> he's up in the stands, and he's freezing. And now the thing is, is Mark had diabetes, and I've got a thyroid condition called hypothyroidism, which is similar but different. Two completely different things, but one of the similar things is is your body temperature just goes to crap as you get older, and. Like you always see, even in the summertime in Florida, you see like old men with cardigans on, right? Yeah, yeah. You see know, old men with sweaters on, and and so Mark had this thing called old man cold, and where he just would get cold, and it, sometimes it would 
be like at the senior bowl, Mark was freezing his ass off in this picture. Like he didn't even ask any questions. He was so cold. He just wanted to leave. Yeah. <laughs> All he was thinking about was like hot chocolate that he didn't have. And like quickly wrap up Reynolds so we can get out of here because I'm so cold. Get back to the hotel room and, and warm up. But uh, old man cold, I, I didn't believe it. Like I thought, like, dude, you're just you're just being a wuss, right? Like, yeah, yeah, you know, come on, and Florida boy, right? And I'm mean, being from Kansas. I mean, trust me, my my blood has thinned out. I'm I'm like like Mark now, but the thing is, is is like over the last year, I think when I was 49, I got old man cold. It was ridiculous. It's like you know, 70 degrees out. I'm like, you know, right. where's my sweater? <laughs> where's my sweatshirt? Yeah, I'm gonna wear jeans today, right? And and that's just it, it's a thing. And like Mark being you know, uh, six months or so older than me, eight months, whatever it was, he got it before me. Mm-hmm. And of course the diabetes didn't help, but now right. that I've got my thyroid condition, it's like, I'm getting it too. And it's, it's a real thing. It's every time I, I get cold, like inappropriately cold again, it's like yeah. <laughs> 75 degrees and like, Ooh, it's a little nippy out. Right. Like that's old man cold. And I always think of Mark. Uh, yeah. Never. He, f- he finally opted. I think the year that we went, in like yeah. 2018 and 2019, he finally opted and he had a Florida state like winter hat. So right. yeah. he, he made an adjustment, not all the yeah. way, but he made a bit right. of an adjustment. And one thing I remember is, is one night we were out, it was Taylor, myself and Mark. And right. we went to a couple different places. We were looking for uh, someone in particular, but um, I just remember just bonding together, going to a couple different places Mark just telling me like other cool stories about other yeah. times that you guys have gone to Mobile. Right. Mobile. He hated Mobile. Yeah. Well, he like you said, like you said, us one time he met Jerry Jones, which was very cool. Yes. On that yeah. trip, Taylor and I met uh Ian Rappaport. And yeah. Mark was like getting ready to leave. He's like, oh, let's go, let's go. But then, like, right. you know, we started talking to Rappaport. He's like, all right, like this is a moment for you guys. So right, right. Uh, you know, definitely. Uh, you know, definitely yeah. wanted to make sure that we got to like have right. that type of moment. So oh, for those, sure. Yeah. yeah. So this is a picture of training camp uh, with Mark and Douglas. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I was like, going to say, that's, <laughs> I was like, that's a pro, <laughs> a pro bowl. Yeah. It does get a little nippy in Florida, right? It did get yeah. a little bit cold. But yeah. uh, but again, pro- probably overdressed, you know, if I'm being honest. I think I think Douglas is just trying to make his dad feel not as right, bad yeah, by yeah, putting, that, putting on the hat and the, and the <laughs> hoodie as well. But uh, Mark was freezing his ass off of this picture. There's no doubt. Yeah, and Mark had a lot of different outfits, as you alluded to uh, along the way. Whether it was hobo motif, whether it was uh, going with the con outfit with with the yeah. whole suit. But of course, let's remember on um, what's cooking. He had multiple different outfits oh, and getups yeah. and everything as well. You had posted earlier the one with him and the ukulele and the straw hat and the Hawaiian shirt and everything. Yeah. Um, one of the other famous outfits that Mark had on what's cooking. A fan favorite, Cam Braid actually went on the show twice. He did season one and season two. And right. um, the first one, Mark thought that he was jo- – the joke was that he wanted Ryan Fitzpatrick because he wanted the guy from yeah. Harvard, but he got right. the wrong guy from Harvard. That's right, yeah. Uh, the second one, Cam Braid showed up as Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh, yeah. But Cam Braid was one of the – he's a fan favorite of the Bucks and his two appearances on What's Cooking. Yeah. Friend uh, of the program. Yeah, friend of the program, Cam Braid. Um, those are one of the, the episodes that fans really like the most. So here is a cut up of, uh, the, the two episodes of Mark and Cam Brate on what's cooking. Yeah. Play it in a moment here. What time is it? Where the heck is Fitzpatrick at? Come on. There he is. He's outside. Ryan, come in. What's up, dude? Uh, he told me we're getting a Harvard grad. You're not Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah, but I'm Cam Brate. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we're going to go with Cam Brate. Sorry, yeah. Ryan Fitzpatrick fans. Uh, have a be seat. Better. This will be much better. You think so? Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Well, What's up? This is uh, What's Cooking. It's the wildly popular, top-rated Buccaneer TV show. And this makes no sense now. The Rubik's Cube, that means nothing now. Just, you can pretend like you're Ryan Fitzpatrick. No, I don't want to pretend. I thought I literally had him. I was going to have him solve the Rubik's Cube. Unfortunately, we didn't have a Rubik's Cube, so this is the best we could yeah. do. Uh, we're going to get started with our, our wonderful show called What's Cooking Right Now. Now, it's a show about cooking. I love to cook. Do you? Uh, nope. I didn't think so. I'm going to look through my notes here. I've got a few other questions before we get to the cooking thing here. Uh, yeah. 
Yep. Talk about your work that you do in Haiti. Um, yeah, so uh, I started vacationing in Haiti, uh, Haiti a couple years ago, and uh, the work I do is uh, important for um, the economy. Good. Yep. Good. Making a difference. <laughs> yeah. Your parents, why do they hate you? Uh, I think it's mostly my face, but also my attitude. To me, that's like, if you could have dinner with any three people in the history right. of time. Right. So for me, if I could have dinner with someone, it would probably be Jay Cutler, um, the quarterback, not the bodybuilder. Um, <laughs> Michael Jordan. All Chicagoans. And George going. Washington. Not a Chicagoan. Yes. George Washington, huh? Yeah, why not? I think when we did this and segment. Jesus. What's up, Cam? Who's Cam? <clears throat> Ryan Fitzpatrick. Good to see you. No, no, no. That was my joke last year. You're Cam Brave. No, I have seven kids. I'm Ryan Fitzpatrick. No, no. They call me Ryan Fitzmagic. The magic man. All right, Ryan, I guess we'll get started with the interview process. All right, cool, let's do it. Now, you played here for the Buccaneers last year. Yeah. Now you're in Miami. What are you doing in Tampa today? Um, you know, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump away. I, uh, you know, just want to see my good friends, Cam. Do you still go by uh, Ron sometimes when you want to be in disguise? Just on the weekends, yeah. Just the weekends, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good, good. Uh, your favorite charity, is it still the uh, Children's uh, Reading School of Haiti? That's honestly one of the best, man. Um, the Derek Zoolander School for Kids Who Can't Read Good and Want to Do Other Things Good, too. I'm sorry. See, on Saturday Night Live, they're not really supposed to laugh during these skits. And, uh, well, let's not call it. All right, last question, Ken. Okay. Our favorite question. Now, we asked this question of you last year. All right. And uh, you came up with some interesting answers. Yeah. But you can't duplicate your answers. Okay. Three people, you're going to Ford's Garage, you're going to have lunch. Hang on. Do, do you have my answers from last year? No. <laughs> like, what if I repeat? Well. Three people that I can have one meal with? Yeah, we're going to go to Ford's Garage. We're going to have a meal. you got two hours. You can spend I'm up. I'm pretty sure I probably said Jesus last year. You said Jesus. Yeah. Yes, you did. Um, I think you called him Jesus, but go ahead. Yeah. Um, three people to have a meal with. Man, that's a, that's a great question. Through all of history. Mm -hmm. Um. Wow, so many great options. Probably um, Jay Cutler. <laughs> um, Ryan Griffin of the New York Jets. <laughs> And um, <clears throat> McKinley, so we can get to the bottom of whether he was a good guy or not. This is why he's the greatest guest in the history of what's cooking. Oh, oh man, that's good stuff. Yeah, wow. to uh, to preface the McKinley thing. So the question before, uh, Mark had asked Cam Brate, uh, name all of the presidents that got assassinated. And right. he got two of them. <laughs> he couldn't get he couldn't get the last two, and so he gave him a hint like one was Garfield, and then the right. other McKinney or McKinley. Yeah. And Mark was like, ah, but like, who really cares about that president? He's like, actually, that's a mean thing to say. I'm sure his like family cares about him. And Cam was like, yeah, like that's mean of you to say. So Cam said <laughs> McKinney to find out whether or not he was a good guy. So right. Uh, that that was a really funny thing. Oh, that gosh. also reminded so me because of the Ford's garage. Now the East West Shrine used to be at the Trop, right, in yeah. Saint Pete. And so a lot of times when we would go to the East West Shrine after we would go to Ford's garage, but you actually have to get into a parking garage to get the Ford's garage. Right now, for most people, not a big deal. You hop in the elevator, you go downstairs, you're at uh, you're at Ford's. Oh, garage. Did you mention elevator? Yeah. Um, no. For those that might not know, Mark was extremely claustrophobic. So Definitely while we all hopped, elevators. yeah. So while we all hopped in the elevator. Uh, it took Mark a long time to meet us at Ford's garage. I think yeah. either going to the car or going yeah. to the restaurant, but we were there in like five minutes and right. Mark just had this like slow saunter the way that yeah. he walks and, uh, it was all the way, all way down the parking garage. I think we already yeah. probably ordered our, our meals by that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just so funny, but you know, he was committed to it. So he was, know. he was also committed to, uh, to Bruce Arians as well. We had Bruce Arians on the show a couple times, and yeah. the, the the last appearance though was 
was brilliant because Mark, uh, just the funny guy that he was, dressed up as Bruce Arians when Bruce was on the podcast. Coach, here, I mean, look, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm almost as old as you are now. Now I don't have quite the gray, but it won't be long, so I'm, I'm not no, far no, off. You're, you're looking fantastic, brother. The hat and the shirt. All right. All right. Perfect. And the glasses too. <laughs> the glasses too. Well, I'm uh I'm Bruce Arians Jr. Don't tell Jake that though. He might get yes. mad. That's, that's <laughs> cool. right. Jake's gonna watch this and think he has another sibling here, but uh, <laughs> Mark is looking pretty fresh today on the podcast. And of course, Mark was wearing that that um uh, Bucko Bruce shirt yeah. where it had Bruce Arians face instead of the old winking pirate with the dagger and the little feather hat. Uh, any other clips we need to to play? Um, I, I do want to get to the Chuck Berry story in honor of Mark. Uh, do we have any other clips to play, or can uh, I get in? We have one more. Just again, yeah. just funny quirkiness of of Mark, just yeah. being timely, bringing things up. And another funny thing, I don't know how much this video will actually come through. It's a little fuzzy, but part of that is because Mark screen for the longest time uh, while the show when we started on YouTube. Yeah, uh, it was not the brightest of cameras, no. but uh, your you know. super chats made a big difference because yes. our camera works again so much better. <laughs> yes. And unfortunately, Mark, it, it never trickled down to Mark's set. <laughs> You'll see. Yeah, here we go. Welcome, Pewter Report readers and listeners, to a brand new edition of the Pewter Report podcast. I'm Mark Cook, along with my boss, Mr. Scott Reynolds. Hello, hello. Scott has I thought, vowed, I thought your audio didn't work for a second. I didn't realize you were just playing a cool Scott. You're like, let's just, John, let's just like freeze up on you every once in a while. Just like, <laughs> can't blink though. Um, I do that sometimes when I FaceTime people. I just like freeze up and they're like, is that real? Uh, and also that's John Ledger that you hear. Uh, he's up in the top left corner. If this is the Brady Bunch, he would be uh, Greg Brady. So, uh, but it's not. Scott Definitely would be, understand uh, that reference. Scott would be Alice. No. Who would you be? Who was in the bottom middle? I don't know. Doesn't Dan matter. <laughs> no, he wasn't in the opening of the Brady Bunch. Uh, <laughs> I actually had a good Dan. debate. I actually had a good debate on my Facebook of the greatest TV theme of all time. I had like a hundred people comment on that. So anyway, if you guys want to uh, give me your favorite TV theme songs of all time, uh, John will probably get mad for me telling you to do this. But hey, we got time. We're uh, we're planning on having a very mediocre first half of this podcast, and then really turn it on. Yep, then really turn it on in the second half. Uh, and this and the Pewter Report podcast is powered by our proud friends and sponsor Celsius. Uh, that's good stuff. And yeah, now, yeah. In all fairness, it wasn't that bad. It was, I think this was no. like a rip of a copy or something like that. Yeah, right? yeah. Something got lost in translation yeah. a little bit, but I wanted the video up there more just to again show. The little quips that that yeah. Mark would have, and the oh, way yeah. that he could just play off of something so well, like whether it was the Brady Bunch or you know alluding to, I believe that was after um, the Bucks Falcons game, the year they won the Super Bowl, where they were like losing at halftime and just were not playing well, and then you know turned everything up in in the in the second half and defeated them. So yeah, uh, just one of those like Mark being so timely. He would have been a great improv actor if he yeah. ever wanted to like get into that. Because oh gosh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, one that um, it, it, you, you can't replace him. There's no comparison. And, and that's why we decided to do a tribute show today to, to kind yeah. of tell some stories, remember him and the way he'd want to be remembered. And I think probably the highlight for Mark would, would be uh, not just us talking about him for an hour and 13 minutes because Mark did love Mark, which was always, was always fun, but yeah. probably the obligatory Nick Carter, uh, Mark Cook picture. I think that he would really have have uh, dug that for sure. Um, so listen, as we wrap up, um, I, I do want to get to the Chuck Berry story in honor of Mark. And uh, uh, I think we should do it for tomorrow's show. Oh, so not, not today then, but yeah, we'll, I mean, we're already going over. Yeah. Okay. We've gone like right. 14, an hour and 14 minutes. I just thought that maybe today I could do the Chuck Berry story for, uh, for Mark, but I, I, you know what, Mark would probably say the same thing that you're saying, right? Yeah, you know, he, he definitely would. We got to save it. We got to save it for the next episode. You know, we, we exactly. got to leave the fans wanting more, you know, and uh, I think a great way to start tomorrow's podcast would be to go with the to go with the Chuck Berry story. Exactly. Well, listen, we hope that you have enjoyed this Mark Cook tribute as much as we have. Uh, we missed the guy terribly. He was uh, an absolute legend uh, for, I think, a lot of the reasons we've demonstrated today for, well, from the stories 
giving the essence of Mark who he was yeah. and, and, and still is. The spirit of Mark Cook lives on in, in Buccaneer fandom. Scott, and, yeah, a hundred percent. We yeah. talked a lot about how hilarious Mark was, but yeah. you know, as a mentor to, you know, I can't thank him enough for just all the things that he did for me. I can't thank you enough as well, Scott, for all you've done for me. But, um, you know, I always said like Mark is the reason that I got to Pewter Report in the first place. Yeah. And, you know, now I'm in this role where, you know, I'm kind of in charge of the interns and stuff like that. And yeah. I just want to help them so much in the ways that like Mark was able to help me and make me a better writer, podcaster, everything else. So as hilarious as Mark was, um, he cared a ton and, you know, really, really, you know, loved this business and being in the media and everything along those lines. So I try to take some like as much of the things that I learned from Mark and try to implement it with right. myself and implement it with others at Peter Report as much as I can possibly yeah. help people. And that's because of Mark. And Matt, if you remember that phone call when I I called you and, and gave you that promotion and, yeah. w and what did I say? I said, Mark, Mark Cook, Cook would be, would, so yeah, be, would, be would proud be proud of you. Yeah, would be proud of me. And I try to do right by him. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, he's he's definitely made a huge impact on on a lot of people. And, and Matt, you're certainly one of, of, of the top of the list in this profession for sure. Yeah. Um, the good news is, is we did it. <clears throat> this is undoubtedly the best <laughs> Peter Report podcast episode. Appreciate that, Joel. And we appreciate everybody tuning in uh, to this special edition. It's Mark Cook Tribute. We're going to get plenty of Dolphins Bucks coverage over the next two Peter Report podcasts, which come out at 4 o'clock on Wednesday and Thursday. And so <clears throat> I think it's very fitting. I think Mark would be very happy to know that, that he was a part of the best Peter Report podcast episode. And listen, folks, if you haven't liked the videos yet, if you haven't subscribed, to the Peter Report uh, TV YouTube channel, please do so. Uh, this has been Mark's baby. This has been his origin. He started the Pewter Nation podcast way back in the day. And uh, and so he would love the fact that we're almost at 9,000, knocking on 10,000's door. So help us get there. Please uh, go ahead and uh, and and subscribe to, to Peter Report TV. Yeah, please do. Please do. Uh, there's no other way to really end it. So I'll say uh, for Scott Reynolds, I'm Matt Matera saying thank you, everybody, for watching and listening to this show. And we will see you all tomorrow for another edition of the Pewter Report podcast. Love you, Cookie. Out. Love you, Cookie. Flare gun. Flare gun. <laughs>